Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children all of all ages, Wizards of the Coast proudly presents It's Not Planescape! Dun, 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 dun. The next D&D book is quite possibly one of the silliest names I've ever heard. Journeys Through the Radiant Citadel. That's right, the weird crystal hinty thing has been revealed. And it is not any of the things we thought it was. Instead, it's a city picture that looks a lot like um, some other city pictures we've seen in the past. In fact, it looks a lot like Freeport. And, I mean, literally, the image of the wing thing carrying messages flying around is the very first image I always presented people with Freeport. So somehow, during the collective unconsciousness, somebody used my image. I should sue them. Anyways, we have the announcement of what the next big thing is. Through the mists of the Earthreal Plain shines the Radiant Citadel. I know we've never heard of it before, but it's always been there. Travelers from across the <clears throat> multiverse flock to this mysterious bastion to share their traditions, stories, and call for heroes. A crossroads of wonder and adventures, the Radiant Citadel is the first step on the path to legend. Where will your journeys take you? Journey to the Radio Citadel is a collection of 13. Ooh, 13, unlucky number. That's going to upset somebody. Standalone D&D adventures featuring challenges for characters levels 1 through 14. How are a bunch of first-level characters in the Earthreal Plane? Each adventure has ties to the Radiant Citadel, a magical city with connection to lands rich with incitement and danger, and each can run by itself or as part of an ongoing campaign. Avor explore the rich and varied collection of adventures in magical lands, other universes, planes and demi-planes, multiverse. Hmm. You know, Marvel has a multiverse too. Maybe Marvel characters and D&D characters could... What if I played Spider-Man in a dungeon? 13 new standalone adventures spanning levels 1 through 14, each with its own set of maps, so you have to pay extra money. Introducing the Radiant Citadel, a new location on the Earthreal Plane that connects adventurers to richly detailed and distant corners of the D&D multiverse. See, now we don't have to do a Dragonlance book or any of the other worlds because they're all connected to the Radiant Citadel. What? It's like the OG GM was right? And each adventure can be set in an existing D&D campaign setting or on worlds of your own design. What? Wizards of the Coast is acknowledging that we make our own worlds? Wow. Introduces 11 new D&D adventures. Monsters. There are stories for every adventuring party, from whimsical and light to dark and foreboding, and everything in between. And we should expect to see it June 21st here in America. Uh, but I don't know what the rest of that means for the rest of people. Uh, it's 224 pages. That's a lot. Uh... The book is written entirely by people of color. Uh, you know, we, we want you to make sure you are aware that we have all hired people of color to write this book because we're Wizards of the Coast and we're politically correct. Uh, the Radiant Citadel is on the Earth. Your plane is carved from a giant fossil of an unknown monster. Hmm. A city inside the body of a monster. That sounds a l really familiar. That sounds a lot like Nowhere from Guardians of the Galaxy. A massive gemstone called the Royal Diamond sits at the core, surrounded by a bunch of smaller Concord jewels, which are gateways to the Citadel's founding civilizations. DM can link any world to the Citadel by placing a Concord jewel there. Uh, the Citadel, unlike many D&D locations, is more of a sanctuary than a place of danger. The book's alternate cover features a Dawn Incarnate, a creature which is the embodiments of sto stories and cultures. But remember, we're not story tellers. Um, uh, there'll be two covers, the regular cover and the deluxe cover, which of course will cost you even more money. Uh, and uh, the adventure titles include Salted Legacy, Written in Blood, The Fiend of Hollow Mine, Wages of Vice, Sins of Our Elders, Gold for Fools and Princes, Trail of Destructions, In the Mists of Manavashar, Between Tangled Roots, Shadows of the Sun, Dark Sun confirmed. The Night Seer's Sikor, Buried Destiny, and Orchards of the Invisible Mountain. Ooh, Orchards, that sounds Oriental. Oriental Adventures confirmed. 
And just so in case you're wondering, here is our first look at three of the adventures and journeys to the Radiant Circle. Journeys to the Radiant Circle features 13 adventures, all written by people of color. Well, you know, as a white person, I'm offended that you didn't have a white person help write this book. <gasps> How dare you? Here's a quick peek at three of them as details start to emerge. Salted Legacy. Uh, it's a first level adventure. Rival merchant families at our at war in the night market. Varying challenges such as a timed cooking challenge. Timed cooking challenge. You stole that right from Food Wars, the anime, Wizards of the Coast. Written in Blood, a third level adventure. Based on the black experience, the southern U.S. features a haunted farm and commoners who are becoming violent. The adventurers need to figure out why without harming them. Well, somebody's going to be upset that you based an adventure on the black experience in the southern U.S., even if it was written by a black person. Because how dare you bring up that horrible period of time in, 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 in American culture? We, we know that that is tr triggering of multiple um, insults. Even if the person who wrote it is a person of color, well, somebody's going to be insulted and find the fact that you based an adventure on the black experience in the southern U.S. controversial and insulting. Shadows of the Sun, an 11th level adventure. This is a purge and scene adventure. Factions as the city ruled by celestial beings are in conflict. Oh, Persian themed? Is the person who wrote it Persian? If not, that's discriminatory. And even if they are you know, we know somebody in the Twitter mob is going to be upset that how dare you acknowledge Persian culture. It's insulting. I know somebody who's Persian and they claim they were insulted by your Persian themed adventure written by somebody who of Persian descent. Uh, you know, again, I know I'm just spitballing here based upon what we've seen for the past couple of years. But again, it just feels like no matter what Wizards of the Coast does at this point in time, they're just screwing themselves. By, by, you know, I mean, just, just, we use nothing but people of color. Well, great. That's going to upset someone um, on the Twitter woke mob or the other end. Uh, here's an adventure that acknowledges the experience of black people in the Southern U.S., something that actually happened. Oh, how dare you mention that? I'm, a, I'm offended. Here's a Persian themed adventure written by somebody of Persian descent. Nope. I'm sorry. I'm offended. Uh, how dare you write an adventure about that? How dare you steal my idea of a flying thing that delivers packages through a city that looks a lot like cities we've seen a hundred times before? I swear, the neon and the signs and the city and the multiple creatures, this is Shadowrun, this is Five Fingers, f this is Freeport. Literally, there is nothing original here. Oh, look, there's a rabbit. So that's what we know about <sighs> Journeys Through the Radiant Citadel. I don't know why you just didn't call it Planes, Planescape, or Planeswalker, or Plane Jammer, or just Adventures in the Earth Through a Plane, because Journeys Through the Radiant Circle is a silly name. Sounds like a video game, maybe, uh, or a, a module, I mean, but it's 220 plus pages, which means it's going to cost upper 70 bucks, plus maps and stuff, and all the little bells and whistles, but there you go! It's not Plane Jammer, Planescape, and yet it is. Instead of the City of Citadel... We have the Radiant Citadel, which pretty much is Citadel, um, the Spire, you know, Our Lady of the Doors. Um, yeah, it's, it's Planescape. It's Plane Jammer. It's Planeswalkers. Uh, we have a city at the center of a crossroads of the multiverse from which you can go anywhere. I, I, please rationalize why a bunch of first level idiots are wandering around a city that opens doors to multiple universes. That makes no sense whatsoever. Come on, Jethro, we gotta get the cows in. Uh, but, uh, there's a rabbit here that wants to take us on an adventure to a magic jungle filled with unicorns and dinosaurs. We gotta get the cows in. First level adventurers should not be dealing with outer planar experiences unless you're starting the campaign in the Radiant Citadel and that they're just first level characters who have grown up in the Radiant Citadel which I guess would be the perfect setting for, you know, 5e. Everybody's always arguing about what race you can and cannot use. Well, now here, as I've said 100,000 times, is the perfect setting where you can run any adventure, have any race, have anything you want or not want. And I really love that Wizards of the Coast is a finally acknowledging that there are people out there who are creating their own worlds and not following what they have written, which of course is going up against everything they've said up to now, or at least everything people think they've said up to now. But yes, 
we can do whatever the fuck we want with Journey to this Radiant Citadel. So yeah, are you excited? Are you disappointed? Do you even care? Let me know. I'm sure we're going to be talking about this a lot. Or, you know, it's going to disappear within two weeks like all the other Wizards of the Coast. I mean, when was the last time anybody talked about Rhyme of the Frost Maiden? Or Strixhaven? Or Witchlight? Or, um... Um, you know, Ravenloft. Uh, they sort of have, you know, disappeared because of stuff. So we'll see what happens with not Planescape, but pretty damn close. Journey through the Radiant Citadel. Bah, da, da, da. It's almost like I predicted this is what it's going to be. And I was right, even though a whole bunch of people said, nah, they'll never do Planescape again. Of course they will. <laughs> I am the OG GM. If you appreciate the nonsense that's coming out of my mouth, let me know. If you don't, let me know. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Help me reach 1,000 subs by August 4th so I can start monetizing this to pay for this stupid house I'm moving into. Till next time, get out of my cheap ripoff of Freeport, you damn kids and your damn flying cat thing. See ya.